creating fiddlers. All right, uh, here we are at the ArtistWorks uh, laboratory where we uh, are always figuring out ways to teach and learn new fiddling concepts here. So this is Daryl Anger, and I'm uh, thinking about uh, ways that we can get some really fun bowing techniques that really work great for bluegrass or fast fiddling in general. Um, one of the it is, it's a way of getting the bow to jump on the string, right? Right. Now sometimes we want to play smooth, right? Sometimes we want the bow to come off the string a little bit. This is kind of a really fun technique. used in conjunction with smooth bowing. Right? It can be really, really fun. And it just it feels good. You know, when it's done right, it's not an effort at all. So what is happening? Well, we're using the lower half of the bow. That's one of the things. It's kind of it's hard to do it up here because we don't have enough. The bow needs to be involved. You know, the bow is going to actually do a lot of the work for you when we do this technique and that's kind of what's great so a way to start experimenting with this is to start in the middle of the bow play our short notes play eighth notes or sixteenths depending on how fast you think you're going and then move slowly down toward the frog playing the notes right at some point the bow is going to start kind of having a little conversation, right? Or just the bow is going to want to do something. You know, one of the things we're doing is we're using, or we're very much utilizing our wrist and fingers to move the bow. You can do this with your arm, right? It can be done, but you're not going to be able to get it fast, and it's going to be work, and you can, we're not going to be able to do it for a long time before your arm wants to fall off or it starts to come apart because of tension, right? So. What we want to really cultivate, and that's going to mean that we get our elbow slightly up so that our wrist is tilted in the direction of the motion of the bow, right? So that might mean that our fingers are going to wrap a little bit farther around the bow. You know, if we have this kind of grip, it's going to be very difficult to have, you know, to uh, have enough bow control to really do this technique. So when we wrap our fingers around like that, and from this angle it looks like that, right and the elbow has to come up to really wrap around and when it, from this angle it looks like that right so and then all of a sudden our wrist is moving in the same direction as the bow rather than having to move in some weird direction that doesn't have anything to do with the direction of the bow so back to this and at some point we're going to find that spot where the bow just wants to jump a little bit and we're going to just let that happen we're just letting that happen we might have to adjust our speed you know as we move toward the frog we kind of have to s slow the notes down because we try to do it too fast we get crunching so this is interesting because uh, different speeds like a, if we're doing a slow speed we have to be closer to the frog and if we do it faster We have to be a little bit farther away, but always between the middle of the stick and the frog. Now, if we take something like the B part of Sally Johnson or Katie Hill, depending on how fast we're playing it. Now, if we start out. To make all these um, these string crossings, we're going to have to use our elbow, and uh, to because this is all busy, right? We can't do it 
what this part is. You know, we can't go. Now, we might be able to do that if we're not bouncing the bow, but if, because we need to be in a position, so the elbow is going up and down. Um, again, as we get started doing this, stay on a note. If you want to um, exercise uh, your pinky, for instance, get, get, get your pinky in shape, you know, do it with, with an A note on the D string, right? The only thing that's important here is that we make sure that this whole area is relaxed and stays relaxed. And that's a whole other thing to think about, but it's very interesting, you know, because that's going to really strengthen and make, uh, make our whole hand more flexible if we can find a way to hold that pinky down and stay relaxed. So that might necessitate some slight adjusting here and get the fiddle not to come forward, be out here where it kind of belongs, and make sure that our elbow's over enough so that we don't have to be um, tense, stretching, you know, trying to get that fourth finger to sit properly. What happens when we move forward a little bit is that we get a nice relaxed, well, a nice curve. We've got a little arch right there. So now we're doing three things at once. We're like, we're working on our wrists and fingers, we're keeping our elbow up, and we're just, you know, getting our little finger used to the idea of being used. And this is a big time saver. And, you know, Lord knows we all um, need, you know, more time to practice and we don't get it. You know, we're trying to find time. So if we can do three things at once, great. Okay, so we're just looking for the bow to be doing the work. We're really having a conversation with the bow at this point. The bow is saying, okay, I can do that. Okay, yeah, okay. Oh, I don't want to do that. Uh, let's try it a little bit farther over. Okay, yeah, that's good. Okay, I, I can deal with that. And all we're doing is just guiding and moving it back. And there's, if I go faster, probably have to adjust closer to the middle of the bow. Go a little slower. Right. And you can see that it's wrist and fingers time. And in order to make that happen, uh, you know, elbow just has to come up a little bit. Now, when we can like work the arm, uh, get the arm involved to make accents. Right? That's kind of cool. I couldn't do that just with the wrist and fingers. I could, but everything would tense up. So it's kind of like this is going and then this is going at two different speeds, right? But they're one's double the other speed. So this is going half as fast or uh, maybe even less fast, you know, one quarter as fast as. as the wrist and fingers are going. If I want to do more complicated rhythm patterns, That's just a little sample of the kind of stuff you're going to see as you come to my uh, Daryl's Fiddling Festival, ongoing fiddle celebration uh, at artistworks.com. Daryl Anger, School of Fiddle, artistworks.com. Check it out. Uh, even if you're, you know, not playing the fiddle, you might dig it. I don't know. It's, it's hard to say about these things, but, uh, you know. Got a lot of great interviews with great fiddle players, a lot of laughs, a lot of drama, 
a lot of thrills, a lot of chills. Uh, you never know with the fiddle what's going to happen. So, uh, yeah, we'll check it out. All right.